Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Acri, and our guest today is Mark Miner. And uh, we're going to mention this in the intro whenever we introduce him, but the firms that he's built, right? Yeah, it's massive. What, 150 advisors? 152, he said, 152? 10 billion 10 in billion assets. In so if you are not in the financial services he's space- a, he's a producer. Yeah, yeah. He has a half a billion dollar book yeah. of business yeah. himself that he runs. If you're not in the financial services space, like that's massive. That is a mega producer right there, let alone the firm that he has built. It's Yeah, it's he's going incredible. to walk us through. So you got to stick around for this uh, episode because he's going to walk us through a specific tactic that he has been using mm -hmm. to build up that type of business uh, for his own practice. And he makes a lot of connections, even though he's an advisor, mm -hmm. makes a lot of connections to other industries and how you can apply this same strategy. And it's brilliant, not only uh, for getting referrals and connecting with your A-list, your raving fans, but you don't even have to pay for this marketing strategy. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely stick around for that. But before we bring him on, we would love it if you uh, take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you're not already subscribed and while you're there, drop us a review to let us know how, you're do how we're doing and we will read it on the show. I got to change I actually have written down in my intro how you're doing. How you're doing. Let us know in the review how you're doing. We would like to know how you're this doing This is like as the well. second or third time we've done that. We would love it. In the meantime, if you would give us your feedback. So we've got a survey over at statepaidpodcast.com slash survey. Seven questions. We'd just love to hear kind of what you like about the show. What types of topics or guests you would like to hear uh, come on. How long you've been listening? Some real simple questions there. So you can get that over at statepaidpodcast.com slash survey. And now this week's interview. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Stake, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Our guest today is Mark Miner. Mark is the founder and CEO of Legacy Investment Services, which serves financial advisors and investors through its businesses, including Advisor Nation and Advisor Controls. Established in 2000, Advisor Nation has grown to become one of the leading advisor coaching programs in the country, empowering advisors to overcome key business challenges through their personalized coaching, proven strategies, marketing services, and a passionate community with some of the best advisors in the country. Mark has personally embraced the need to create repeatable processes that would improve and investment planning and business outcomes that has enabled legacy and advisor nation to grow to over 10 billion, but a billion <laughs> in collective assets. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me guys. Mark, it's amazing to have you. Uh, I had the privilege of talking with you on the phone about a week ago. And when Josh was reminding me today, just for the <laughs> audience to know, he's like, Hey, we're going to have Mark on. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it talks about, Oh yeah. If we're going to have on him on, this is going to be no problem. We'll just sit back, relax. He's going <laughs> to, he's going to just wing this and take it away. Cause you had delivered so much value just on our phone call. Mm. Cause full transparency for the audience. Uh, we're planning a webinar together. Yep. Yep. So if you're in the financial services arena, uh, stay tuned for that webinar. You know, look on our site. You'll be able to find it there and register for it. But Mark would love for you to introduce yourself to the audience by sharing a little bit of your story, right? You've built an incredible practice, but then on top of that, you're doing coaching, you have this software. So can you share kind of what led you to where you're at today? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the reader's digest version is I worked for a big captain's company years ago and uh, about 30 years ago learned a lot. And a few years into that, kind of got sick of, of being restricted. So I uh, started the independent route, put my arms around some guys and ladies that were, were uh, brighter than me in certain areas, quite frankly. And, and uh, 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 fast forward today, we, you know, we, we, we have uh, 152 advisors in 72 Ooh. locations. And uh, it's just this whole theme, this whole community of cross pollinating and sharing best practices, concepts uh, and sales and, and uh, ideas uh, like what you guys bring to your audience every day. That's crazy. So, 152. Yeah. From, yeah. yeah it's, and, and again, I, you know, I'm, I'm a practicing advisor. I, my, my passion is being in the trench, uh, helping clients and, and, and sharing those ideas guys. So, so uh, I manage about a, a little over half a billion myself mm. and uh, you know, my days are, are uh, much like everybody that's listening to this, which is I'm in front of clients and uh, in front of those needs and, and trying to identify best solutions. So uh, I think it's the way, I, you know, the best way to, to consult others is to actually be um, sharpening your pencil on a daily basis. And that's how I do it. 
No, I, Marcus, I was going to say, gonna literally say I totally agree. I think one of the biggest issues out there in the world when it comes to it, the advice that people give is the world's changing so rapidly. Mm. So if you are not a practitioner and what you're trying to advise people on and you're not constantly sharpening that saw, as they would say, then you're not going to give the most appropriate advice. What, what ends up happening, I think, with a lot of coaches is they tend to m- lean more towards like principles mm-hmm. than they do actually tactics. So everybody is full of these principles now, like, okay, I know the principle of what I need to do, but they don't know the tactic, like the step forward of actually what to take and what direction to go. So I love that you're a practitioner and, and half a billion. Yeah. You just got to do half a billion. (laughs) That's, that's definitely nothing to sneeze at, let alone the 10 billion (laughs) under the whole firm is, is unbelievable. So what's been the secret sauce, Mark? Like, how have you built that book? Where are you getting leads from? You know, what what has led to success, I guess, in the past in terms of getting new clients? What are you doing today? What are you coaching other advisors to keep your pipeline full and to build up a book of uh, clients like that? So I guess, Josh, going back in time again, I always looked at uh, building the business based on what uh, value I wanted to have in the business when I sold it one day. And not that I'll ever retire but uh, ultimately, when you look at your evaluations first and reverse engineer the answer, you do things uh, um, based on I do things on this concentric circle basis, which is looking at marketing the right way. Uh, that is um, uh, um, setting a stage to get in front of clients on a regular basis through events. And there's uh, there are certain things that I'm doing today that I wasn't doing even a year ago uh, to get in front of more prospects and clients uh, as I'm as I'm prospecting, I'm also supporting that client base, which is a big deal because it's those, it's, it's that raving fan principle that, that drives those clients that I have to, to brag about the services that I'm bringing to the table. And, uh, there's so many disgruntled people in the world today uh, mm-hmm. to, you know, my hope is that, that, uh, I'm one of those people that they view as, as an answer to their friends and family. And I, uh, ironically, I, on the marketing side, I, uh, I limit my practice to the friends and family of my existing clients, which pretty much says I'll take anybody that my, my clients refer to me. So, it's just a, so you're it's working just solely by funding. referral now. Yeah, well, yeah, it's hundred percent referral. Um, but, uh, but you know, if I wasn't working the referral side of things, I would, I would, I would be doing the, uh, the white glove and, and the different, uh, uh, solutions that can actually uh, be, uh, a more, more of a broad based marketing approach to getting in front of, of more people. But if, if anyone that's listening has 10 clients under their belt today, 10 clients or more, then you can add another zero behind your paycheck by just setting a stage and creating an experience for those existing clients. And that experience, if done well enough, um, and uh, if it's sexy enough, if you will, they will be encouraged to bring their, their, uh, their friends and family uh, to these events. And, and then of course, yeah, you know, I, I always thought it, you, you, once I have a, um, uh, a butt in the seat to put it lightly, uh, then, then I need to make sure that, that what I'm bringing to the table is more solid than the bigger names out there. Uh, you know, that are across the river for me right now without mentioning names. Um, I, I, I wanted to distinguish myself to, to be providing something that they weren't providing. So uh, a lot of it was uh, uh, doing a lot of homework and vetting the different investments that are out there and uh, not just having uh, good options, but having exceptional uh, solutions and a, and a, and a mix that's uh, holistic in terms of, of uh, you know, bringing solutions that best fit their individual scenarios. And then ultimately, again, as I'm going around this concentric circle, once they're a client and they've done paperwork with me, um, I want to make sure that they have an exceptional experience with myself and my staff as it relates to service and managing their life life savings. So all of that being done the right way, again, puts puts more people into the position of being a raving fan and wanting to, to market uh, for me. Well, what's the biggest pain point of the client experience in your mind? Like, because you said if you have just 10 clients, you can add another zero to your paycheck. And I'm assuming, and you mentioned it's from creating a great experience. Well, how do you, like in your practice, like how do you guys create a great experience? That's a, that's a great question. So um, I'll just give you the, probably the easiest way to uh, to uh, to begin the rating fan um, concept. And uh, I do golf outings. And you think, what's the golf outing going to do? 
I mean, where, where's the education coming from? Well, at the end of the day, we all know that this is a relationship business and people, um, you don't have to say a whole lot to uh, prospects to your, your clients are actually saying something to them to get that person to an event. And when you have a golf outing, that's the simplest way to ask for referral. And, uh, I just laid out this way. Um, why don't you, why don't you guys put your own, uh, foursome together or a couple foursomes together and I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it. In fact, what I'll end up doing is going to the vendor that, that I'm giving the most business to, and then they're going to pay for it. So <laughs> my marketing costs nothing. If you think about it, if you do it the right way, uh, at the beginning of the year, I set up, uh, I, I'll call, uh, four of the uh, different companies that I work with, uh, from fund companies to uh, VA and FIA companies and, uh, and ask them to sponsor the different events. So in advance in a given year, I know when I'm going to do it. I reverse engineer the answer in terms of when I'm going to do an event, even including a golf outing by uh, using the wholesaler dollars first, right? Their, their availability will drive so funding for that. And then I have time. I know way in advance when those dates are, and I, uh, and then I'll, I will physically ask myself, uh, my clients, um, uh, would you like to put a golf on together and put a, four, I mean, a, a foursome together. That's all. And you can take a few clients or 10, 10 of those clients. They're not all going to play golf, but when you ask for, to, for them to put a twosome or foursome together, you're asking them to bring a referral to you. And in that stage, I will, I will simply do a, a very simple introduction. Let them know who I am, how long I've been in the business. And I let them know that I or my staff are going to follow up with them in, within 48 hours. And, uh, and, and they can have a second opinion. And rarely do I get a no. Wow. I love that strategy. Yeah, seriously. A question for anyone who's listening that, you know, talking about the sponsors, bringing these vendors on that you work with, what are you giving the sponsors? What makes it kind of worth it for them to fund this? Um, is it at the actual event itself that they're getting, you know, product placement? How does that work? Uh, it took me years to figure out that I don't have to pay for any of my marketing. So uh, if I'm giving business to T. Rowe Price or PIMCO uh, or uh, XYZ company, otherwise, then I, I w- don't be afraid to go to the uh, external wholesale that's representing that, that uh, vendor, if you will, and tell them that you're going to be doing a couple events and um, ask them if they would kindly sponsor those events. And the, the typical dollar amount is anywhere from 500 to, to $1,500 uh, from each of their pocketbooks. They have a okay. range of, uh, of, uh, you know, spending and, uh, they'll, they'll tell you what they can do. And I would say, don't be afraid to put a couple together. So, so for example, if, uh, anyone does business with a, uh, a variable annuity company, some variable annuity companies um, will have money themselves, but then they have sub advisors like T Rowe Price within there or BlackRock, and you can go to uh, those vendors, those sub advisors, and ask for their pocketbook as well. So you double up those dollars, and that funds the entire golf outing. And, and that golf outing might be just one uh, foursome, or it could be you know I have upward to 120 golfers at various events. So, wow. um, but don't think that it has to be big. To, to the, the, some of the biggest. Uh, you know, the biggest clients I've ever gotten were the smaller ones, the more intimate. And, uh, and again, I'm, I'm paying nothing for that marketing or, <laughs> or next to nothing. And you're literally on that first golf ad- outing, telling them who you are, what you do, how long you've been in the business and, and offering a second opinion saying you're going, you're just assuming kind of the close there that, Hey, I'll call you with a second opinion just so you have it. Yes. I, I think the, the power in the punch is, Everyone there, uh, including the clients, you know, they need to be reminded of who you are, what you do for a living, and what you'll do in the follow-up. This is not just for fun. This is to this is to build business. I'm, um, you know, I'm I'm clear. And the in my introduction, you know, the, the two things that I do is a thank the, my staff for helping to put things together. If you you are your staff and you have one person there, just thank that person for helping you bring it together. Uh, thank everybody for coming, and most importantly, thank you, Mister and Mrs. Client for bringing your guests because we will would never be where we are without you doing that. And this is friends and family only. This is a club. And when you create that club concept, mm. just think about it. You know, who, who doesn't want to be in that super fancy, you know, country club? You, you just, it, it's cool to be a club member. So I create that, that club theme and I'm not spending tons and tons of money at the highest end course, but I'm creating an experience where, 
they walk in, they're not, they're not getting steak and lobster guys. They're getting a, they're getting a sack lunch. Okay. <laughs> but they do, I'm giving them a lot of beer or whatever they want to drink. They up beer. But, um, and, and in fact, I don't golf with them and I'm just giving you one example of one event. Yeah, right. I don't golf with them. I, I, but I, I am the beer, I'm the cart girl. I go out and I hand them beer Brilliant. or pop or whatever they want. And that gives me an opportunity to shake hands with every one of those prospects, no matter how many people are at that golf outing. And I get to know them intimately. Uh, so they're encouraged and, uh, to, to want to, uh, to say yes to a follow-up meeting when my officer or myself calls them, uh, you know, a couple of days later. It's interesting. We've been at this for what, three years now on yeah. the podcast. It's come up a lot with really big producers that they do these yes. client events. Yep. So I just want to point that out to And everybody. well executed. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. the idea of get, um, getting vendors to pay for it, like that transcends just financial services, right? If you're in real estate, go to your mortgage person, right? They're, you're feeding them business. They're more than happy to chip in, right? You got to follow your RESPA guidelines or whatever it is. Everybody has their different compliance, but there's a huge opportunity opportunity there. And in that client event, what I loved what you said is, look, it's a relationship-based business. How do you have relationships? You get to know somebody. How do you get to know somebody? It's through conversation and through this personal interaction. So you can, because Josh and I are in the drip marketing game, right? We've been doing this for over a decade. And the truth is we use our drip marketing to coach people to do one thing, which is pick up the phone and call the people that you yeah, have a conversation that you sent this person, this gift. And the whole reason we say that is because we know there's nothing that's going to re replace that interaction, that human to human interaction. I'm curious, yeah. like when you have these clients, right. And they're bringing their referrals and then you're going to offer that, offer that second opinion. How does that, does that naturally turn into business for you where it's just kind of in, you show them what you can do for them and they turn it, or is there an actual sales process at that point? Are you following up multiple times with those people? How does that look from a drip standpoint? That's a great question. Uh, everything is process driven and in your, you guys are exactly right. This, this isn't just financial services. This is any type of, of, uh, uh, um, sales. If you're in, if you're in frontline sales, this, this works. So, um, but, uh, but I, I, uh, in follow up, uh, uh, I have a discovery call and the discovery call could be a discovery meeting for those that are more comfortable with it. But my discovery call takes 15 minutes. And that is a, a call that's set with me. The, uh, the, uh, um, admin that sets that call for me just makes it really easy. Mark just wants to have a conversation, 15 minute conversation. I let them know in my introduction, uh, I want to t give you some background on me. Just, I know you heard it when I talked to you a couple of days ago, but I want to be a little more, um, uh, you know, I want to give it, give you a little more history and background. And then uh, I'd like to know about you. And then I just shut up and I listen to them and they talk. And then, uh, at the end of that conversation, in the last couple of minutes, I just say, well, here's my, our process. Uh, if it makes sense to you, I'm going to send you a fact finder and that fact finder will come back to us with statements. And um, my team will, uh, um, or myself will, will create the, the plan that you have currently. And that's what we're going to focus on in the next meeting. So everything is going to be a step-by-step -step process from, from that discovery call. Uh, they will then have a face-to-face -face or virtual meeting with me. I do about, uh, at least, uh, 85 to 90% of my work virtually. So I live in, I split my time between Peoria, Illinois and, and Naples, Florida, and you can, you can probably guess where I spend more time. <laughs> um, and, and so I had to be, I had to figure out how to go virtual and, uh, COVID uh, became my best friend actually as related to, you know, um, a propelling business. Um, and, uh, so step one, I, I see him for, uh, to, to, to review their current plan. And when I review their current plan, I'll give them, uh, a, a taste of the, the quality of where it is and where it isn't. And, uh, I, I paint pictures of exactly their, what their makeup is. So they have a, a, the better, a better understanding of, of what their, uh, different investments look like, um, uh, in their plan better than they've ever seen in their, in their, in their history. Because most people, I I at least in the financial services industry, don't slow down to actually take time to build a plan. So we, we use software that takes about 15 minutes to build that out. It, I mean, it, it takes anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes, depending on the extent of the plan. Um, but so I, I cover the current plan and I give them the taste in that first in a virtual or face-to-face -face meeting, a taste of what ideas look like. I don't call it a proposal. 
I test their temperature. Mm. I never say do this. Mm. I say, here are some ideas. Let me get your thoughts. Again, I don't care what, what you're selling, get their thoughts, take, take their temperature. In, in, our, in my industry, if, uh, if um, uh, they have, uh, if I bring up uh, the concept of an annuity and they are Ken Fisher fans, if you're familiar with Ken Fisher, uh, Ken, Ken, Ken say, you know, he says, uh, annuities are the, the devil, whatever, <laughs> the joke. but, um, but so I'll just, I'll stay away from it. I'll say, okay, check that. We're not going to, we're not going to go there. So I kind of know where to steer for the, for the next meeting, which is going to be the proposal. The next meeting is always put anywhere from five to 10 days out. My belief is if you see anybody uh, more than 10 days out, uh, then, then, uh, then it, it, uh, they're going to lose what you said in that first meeting. Okay. And if I go less than five days, I don't have time to prepare or it looks like it's a little cheesy and push. Hmm. So I tell them, um, when in that first meeting, um, I actually, I set this, the next meeting myself right there. I don't pass it on to my office because I've got their attention and I'll say, what's the schedule look like in the next five or 10 days, pull my schedule up in the locks in 80% of the time that they will have their schedules in front of them and uh, it's done. And, uh, and then the, the proposal uh, that is the second meeting is going to be giving them a taste of where they were for about 60 seconds to where they are currently, and then uh, show them any kind of red line uh, and deficiencies. And then I go right into the proposal and that proposal is pretty solid because they were telling me in the first meeting what they liked and what they didn't like. And I just aligned solution to fit what I knew they would want to buy because this is not, it, you know, I, I believe success comes when you can bake together, not just what they need, but what they want with what they need. Mm. And when they're getting what they want, they will, they will say yes, yes, yes. And every time I'm going through the a proposal or a piece of that plan, I'm asking them one question and it's repetitive. Does this make sense? Yes or no. If it's yes, check the box. We're doing paperwork on that in, the, in our third meeting. Does this make sense? Yes or no. And if it's a no, then I'll tweak that portfolio to get a yes. And then that, and then finally, um, I let them know in that second meeting that uh, we're now going to, you know, set the third meeting five to ten days out. And it's uh, extremely important uh, that uh, we uh, uh, we we review the rationale of everything we just went over in the first fifteen minutes. And the last 15 minutes, half hour, you will sit with me or my staff. We'll do paperwork uh, if you're comfortable doing that. So between now and our next meeting, my staff is going to reach out. And in preparation for that meeting, um, they're going to ask you questions, collect information so we can prepare paperwork. And in that third meeting, we'll be ready. And if you're not ready, we won't do it. But if you're ready, we'll be ready for paperwork. It's a very soft way uh, to move from uh, that education of their current plan, uh, giving them ideas and a proposal, and then and giving them a way out. Giving them a way out means there's no pressure to come see me when they're about to do paperwork, and uh, and it's done. And it's it, it's uh, I can't remember the last time somebody said no. <laughs> That's but, awesome. By the way, <laughs> I, 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 by the way, when you're prospecting, don't think I get everybody pro everybody that comes to a golf outing or a wine event or anything that we do. Um, it's a third, a third, a third guys. It's, 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 you know, a third of the population is going to say yes right now. A third is going to say yes along the way. And a third is going to say, uh, hell no. Mm. Why? Because they're happy with what they have. Okay. That's fine. But I'm here mm. when, when, when something breaks with your other relationship, I'm here. And by the way, I keep dripping on all of them. I don't let any of them go. I invite them back to more events. I love that. I'm putting my claws into them. It's, it's no different than the value of reminder media where you got, you know, the value is constantly dripping, keeping your face in their face and, uh, and being Wait, that person. That, that's that a hashtag right first. there. Let's say we might want to trademark keeping that. Keep their, their face, face in their face. In their face. I love that. That's in that hashtag that Ariel. We actually have t-shirts that we take to conferences. Yeah. I like, I like your face. Right. And yeah. On the back is it says, it it look good on a magazine. magazine. Yeah. Uh, I, I love so many golden nuggets in there. One is a no is not a never. Right. So if people say no, it doesn't mean it's a never. Right. So you keep in front mm -hmm. of them. I love that. A second mm -hmm. thing that, you know, I love about when I'm hearing you speak about your process, that is a huge takeaway for me is it's, it's so intentional and you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, even down to the, Hey, I'm going to set it out. Not too far of 10 days because people will forget, but not too soon for less than five days, because then it seems pushed and cheesy. You've thought all that through. And then a third golden nugget that I took away from that was you do a really strong discovery phase. 
to figure out what is it truly that this prospect wants. And then in turn, it's very simple when you say it back, but so few salespeople execute on it well. You literally present back to them literally what they want, the solution of how you can provide what they want. And I think to myself, that's a no brainer, but so many industries, like you take real estate, a huge complaint I hear from consumers in the real estate industry is they go to an open house and they're visiting this open house and they meet this real estate agent. And then the real estate agent starts sending them properties that are nothing like what they want. Yeah. Now the real estate agents thinking to themselves, well, you don't understand. These are the only homes that are on the market. These are the closest ones that I have. But the reality is, is the consumer's experience is just going, you don't, know what I want. You don't know what I'm looking for. And so it applies in so many different industries that all you have to do is do a really strong discovery phase and understand the true why of what this person wants and then deliver that for them. And if you can't walk away, they weren't meant to be your client anyways, but deliver that for them. That's a huge golden nugget for people to take away. No, no, no question. And you're right. It's across every industry. It's, uh, it's, it's positioned to just ask enough questions and uh, engineer that answer to fit what they want, knowing you're, you're also helping them to get what they need. Uh, and then, you know, there's this, there's this, if you're in a position or uh, in, in, um, in a role uh, like mine where I have to review with clients, I then am reviewing, meeting their expectations because I gave them what they wanted. So uh, as it is to, to real estate, the people that, that get into this home, uh, it may not be what the realtor thought I should have, but it's what I wanted to have. So my satisfaction level is higher. And uh, um, I would only say that, that, that expect anybody that, that is positioning to give clients, their clients what they want, expect those people to, to, uh, to provide you with, uh, with referrals. And, um, and again, set the stage for them to provide you with referrals. And how I set that stage, and I said golf outing, but as it relates to other industries, you could do a wine event and it could be as simple as bring anyone, you know, you want to this wine event that you think might be interested in a, if I'm a realtor, a, a new home or, or, uh, or, 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 or potentially changing and wanting to sell. So come to the wine and wine and cheese event. And by the way, if you bring anybody that is, you know, that uh, a prospect, if you will, will give you. Uh, some embroidered wine glasses. And by the way, I have clients, if you went to their home, you'd see an, an array of, of uh, my brand, it's legacy for my personal practice, of, and a, a, this, this huge shelf of, of legacy glasses because they keep referring people. And <laughs> what are they doing behind the scenes? They're having wine with their friends. This is legacy all over the place. Who's legacy? So branding is a big deal. And by the way, those, those branded glasses might cost you two to $4. Yeah. What's that? It's nothing. nothing. Yep. And and the wine bottles of wine or whatever, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the cheapest way to, to market. And a wine thing does, it could be at your house. You don't have to spend, you can spend next to nothing. If you just uh, did it at a house or your, or, or, um, or a, uh, a park. I mean, I, there are so many different cool places, uh, museums, um, that you can go to and, uh, for, for next to nothing and, and, and pull your clients together with their friends to make those introductions. I'm seeing a common theme here of alcohol, though. Alcohol and, and a nice, <laughs> a nice alcohol on the golf course. Alcohol. That's right for the know. wine and cheese. Yeah. Well, Maybe. I don't that's know. The, know, that's I, the golden I, I, nugget I, for you, ladies and gentlemen. Just Have give them alcohol, alcohol at your <laughs> events. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, I love it. What you're saying is so powerful. It is something where it's making people feel special, making them feel unique. You don't have to go and do something outrageous. We had someone on the podcast that I forget who it was to give them credit, but they talked about they used a hotel bar. They rented out the hotel bar and they said it was simple. I mean, you're spending, you know, four or 500 bucks. You don't have to deal with the appetizers. You don't have to deal with the drinks. You invite all your top 50 clients. They come, they feel special. You're getting free happy it was hour. Dave Panazzo. Was that who it was? Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, it's just an incredible idea that you literally, you get to show up, mingle, don't have to worry about anything else and Brilliant. then leave yeah. just for 500 bucks. Right. And it's just a no brainer. And that is what's going to turn into ultimately the referrals. It's going to return into the repeat business because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Everybody knows that, but they don't know how to execute on it. Doing an event for clients is a great way to generate. And it's referrals. repeatable. You just run mm -hmm. the same play over and over and over again. That, that's it. And, and I'll tell you, that's, that's the key term right there. If, if you do this, don't do it once. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Repeatable process is going to do two things. A, you'll look back saying, wow, that worked. 
you know, you got wake, you, you, you're, you're moving along and, it, and you'll see results. It's not a, it's not a, it takes 18 months to build that up to be something that is, is, is adding that zero behind your paycheck. Mm. B it's adding valuation. So if, uh, anyone that's that, that owns or is part owner of any practice, whether it's, a um, a financial planning practice in my case, or, or if it's a real estate firm or whatever it is, you know, um, think of valuations, think of, think of, uh, think of how you build additional value and the, the way you build additional value is positioning to where, um, you have a, a written repeatable process where if you step out of those shoes, somebody can step right into those shoes and move right along. And you've just taken your valuations from a, from a, from a, you know, in, in my case, it'd be a trail base of two, two times, uh, trails to, to, uh, eight to 12 times EBITDA. Cool. So at the end of the day, it's, it's think of your valuations, what you'll sell this thing for in the future, this machine that you're building and make sure the machine has the components that are, that are, um, built in such a way where, uh, in process, if you will, uh, where it's all repeatable. Yeah. But well, who was it that we had on the sales ops guy? Was it Gilkey? Do document delegate. Do document delegate. He said, you do it, you document how you do it. And then you delegate it to somebody else because that's true leverage in a business. Like, yeah. Do document delegate. Most people get stuck in the do and they never get out. Yeah. They never get out of the do. You got to yeah. do document delegate. Well, uh, it's interesting. I don't know if you guys know of, uh, uh, this, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a big push in a, at least in the financial services industry, it's called reg BI, uh, that turned in, it, it was uh, a Department of Labor ruling initially. Yep. And uh, about three years ago, I, uh, about three and a half years ago, when the government was uh, pushing hard to, to create better regulation, that's when I thought, let's take all this, this these uh, written repeatable processes and uh, put them to FinTech. And I uh, took them to uh, technology giant uh, and uh, created advisor controls. So everything that I'm talking about is, is available on a push button. So when I do a marketing, uh, when I'm doing my marketing, it's, it's uh, uh, step by step, hit a button and it's done. Uh, if I'm building a plan, it's, uh, you know, um, step by step and it's done. So it, uh, and it's done in a way that, that is uh, uh, favored um, by the, the government, if you will, under what we call Reg BI. So um, in other industries, it, you know, it, you may not take it to a, a technology firm to do it. It doesn't have to be that complex. It can be as simple as uh, doing what you guys were just saying, document, just write down what you're doing for marketing. This is real simple. If you just, re, if you just took what I, the, you know, part of this conversation, <laughs> wrote it down and then just repeat that and do it at least every six weeks, every six weeks. Um, and if you do that for every different six weeks, people, different people every six weeks for like your events you know, and stuff, or, uh, uh, um, I, I would have the same person every six weeks. If that person brought somebody new to that experience. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So my greatest, my, my a clients, you guys are not, are, are don't have uh, you know, $50 million under management with me. My a clients are the, are my raving fans. Love that. So in any industry, the a clients should be those people that spread the word faster than anybody else yep. that uh, invite them to every one of your events. As long as they're bringing somebody new to the experience, at least every other time. That's and, awesome. Uh, and, and, and yeah, and, and you, you'll start to create a core of raving fans and it becomes a theme within your business, within your company. Um, uh, there's an expectation that you are going to be having another one of these fun things um, with or without alcohol. And it, you know, it could be just a happy hour, bringing people together for a happy hour night, you know, whatever it is, but, uh, but, but standardize it, uh, create that expectation. People will have in their minds, always this thing, look in their inbox and there might be an invite to the next happy hour or whatever you're putting together for them golf outing, wine event, et cetera, uh, could be an educational thing. And the, the key is, um, whatever the industry, it, it, I would look at having social events and educational events. I'd toss them up. So every six weeks, education, every six weeks, social Great idea. And education. And I don't think education has to be, um, um, much like, first of all, for, much like reminder media, there's, there's so much content, great, diverse content. It, 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 it makes you want to dive in. Well, um, it, it, when you're doing an educational event, there could be a 20 minute presentation on travel, bring in a travel agent mm. and have them talk about, you know, world travel under COVID. How do you do it? 
and uh, and just bring diverse uh, information and and always positioned to be the person that uh, makes the introduction and remind everybody what you do and, and, and how you do it and try to tie. I try to tie a little bit of what I do in with whatever uh, third party I'm bringing in to speak on nice. whatever topic. So love that. Yeah, it's so, so good. So uh, speaking of repeatable process, we always like to ask people to come on the show and uh, you know, highly successful 10 billion in collective assets, half a billion your own crazy. What are some of the routines uh, that you do, you know, two or three daily routines or habits maybe that you've built that have really contributed to your success where you are today? That's a great question. So when, when COVID hit you guys, uh, you know, we'd already done virtual work for years, but, uh, when COVID hit, it was a, it was a radical, uh, move to the virtual world. And when you move virtually, when you're not in front of your peers, or when you're not in front of your team as often, there can be a, a huge disconnect and, uh, there could be clogging and workflow and all kinds of problems. So anyway, uh, I, we started doing daily morning meetings and those morning meetings might be five to 15 minutes, but every single day with rare exception, uh, we will have a team meeting. We'll bring, bring everybody together. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about, uh, uh, the week and what we need to do to plan for things, whatever that is. Um, the second thing that I did that was defining is created a quarterly continuity meeting So continuity, if you have anybody working with you or for you, it's so important that, that, um, if you really want to go that next level, Mark Miner, then I needed to create redundancy to be able to scale my practice. So Mm. really to go to the next level, you got to think about replacing yourself. And so I decided to, uh, create continuity meetings whereby we would talk out, uh, ironically, you know, a I, ideas on how to create the, 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 the backups, the redundant, the, the redundancy necessary for, uh, keeping workflow moving along to be able to grow the practice. Um, but also it created a stage where, uh, we could talk out problems and this word problem is like an evil word, right? You say problem, people want to run from it. But, but what I learned, I guess what was defining for me is, and I learned it from a, from a, a professor friend of mine problems are good. They're not bad. Hmm. And when you bring up a problem, I have every single person that you have to bring up a problem at that continuity meeting around a table. Yes, we have alcohol after, but, um, <laughs> uh, but, but, but it, we bring up problems and it, and everybody has a chance to help solve the problem, to add to that. We document it. And then we look at uh, the next co- in the next continuity meeting. We look back at that quarter to say, did we fix that problem? Mm. If we did check it off, it's awesome. You make progress. It feels good. If we didn't, okay, let's figure out a way to fix it. And that has led to this, this soft hearted, just so uh, such a tight um, feeling of uh, family with everyone I'm working with. I love that. No, it's awesome. Continuity meetings. That's great. I actually wrote that well, one down. We do um, the morning morning huddles. We've yeah. been doing that for years. And, yeah. I, and I would agree with you. Mm-hmm. It has paid dividends in mm-hmm. our own company doing those morning huddles. Every department has their morning huddle. Yeah. Mark, thanks so much for being here. Before we close out, please let people know how they can connect with you, how they can find out more about uh, the services that you offer. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, as I was saying, all the repeatable processes and planning and, and prospecting and management of uh, at least the financial services practice can be found on advisorcontrols.com. That's plural, advisorcontrols.com. And uh, I'm uh, super happy uh, to be working with you guys and uh, connecting here on this podcast. Thanks for having me. Awesome, Mark. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you all for listening to get those links that Mark mentioned. Learn more about what he's doing over there at Advisor Nation, Advisor Controls. You can go get that on staypaidpodcast.com. So we have all the show notes. We actually did a survey. We have a survey out right now, you know, asking people uh, just kind of, you know, what they think of the episodes. They like shorter episodes. What kind of guests do they like? What topics? One of them is do you read the show notes for the episodes? Yes. And one of the options was, what are show notes? 
<laughs> and uh, unfortunately, 30% of people said, what are show notes? Yeah, go read those show notes. So staypaidpodcast.com. That's where you can get the video to this interview and get all of the links. And it's the one that you should use if you're uh, sharing this episode with a friend here. So if you enjoyed this podcast, you want to know how to show your support. First way is to leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts along with a comment in your review. And then the best way as I mentioned, is to tell a friend about the show. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can follow along our journey on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, and I'm Luke Acri. And you just heard an interview from a real producer, someone who's not only a practitioner still managing over half a billion in assets, but has built a massive firm. And they gave you such a golden nugget, such a great action item, which is when was the last time, if ever, have you done a client event? Do a client event plan. You've probably been thinking about it, right? We're coming up on the holidays. What better time to do a client event than around the holidays, right? So do a client event. You could do something like the golf idea. You could do a wine and cheese night. You could do something like we said Dave Pananzo did with the hotel, but do a client event and invite your 50 best relationships. You'll see that pay dividends and referrals and repeat business, and it will create that tribe for you, those raving fans that ultimately is what you need in your business. Remember, the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every single industry is top producers take action. Take action on that today. <laughs> <laughs>